Hello Daily Drafters and welcome back to the channel. For today's Daily Draft, we've got a Bloomboro Draft in store for us today. So we're going to dive right into pack one, pick one. And we've got some interesting ones here. We have a Carrot Cake, which is currently at the time of recording the number one performing common in the entire set. There's a Cash Grab, which is a top five common as well. I haven't had the chance to play Squirrels, but this would be a great reason to do so. There's also Phineas Eights Archer, two mana, two, two, Vigilance, Reach. Whenever it attacks, you put a counter on, on each other creature. That's a token or a rabbit. Then if you have total power 10 or greater, you draw a card. Um, Pond Prophet as well. Seasoned Warren Guard, good as well. I don't know if I want to like go all in on Phineas early. I think this card is good. I don't think it's like outstanding though. I haven't had the chance to draft the, the Squirrels deck and this is like the exact perfect card to get into that. I think there's a chance, if Phineas were one color, I would definitely take it there, but it's just not. And that's a, that's a close one. I'd have to look at how Phineas is performing as well in the data to see if it's worth it. Now let's see what we can follow this up with. The only black card is Early Winter. There is a Rust Shield Rampager, which is not a squirrel. Longstalk Brawl is not too bad. And Wear Down isn't great. There is a Blacksmith's Talent though, and I think this card is actually pretty good. A Reptilian Recruiter for Lizards. So there's not a great follow-up to Cash Grab, unfortunately. No squirrels in this entire pack here, and only one black card. No black removal or anything. I guess I'll hedge my bets and take Blacksmith's Talent. If something like Red White ends up being open, or even Red Black, this card's going to be really, really good. Speaking of Red White, there is a Seed Glaive Mentor here. What else do we have? Scales of Shale for the Red Black Lizard's Life. Druid is the only green card. So this pack is actually quite bad. I think the best card is Seed Glaive Mentor by a lot. And it's not particularly close in my opinion. So I'm just going to go ahead and just take that. Okay. I mean, this is a squirrel. It mills too. It goes well with the cash grab. But I don't think I really want a second blacksmith's talent. It's a little expensive. A dewdrop cure, I think, is just also not the best thing. Repel Calamity could be playable in a kind of a red-white low to the ground deck, and Warren Elder, not horrible. I'm wondering if I should take the Daggerfang duo to go back toward the cash grab life here. Um I'm not liking a lot of my red-white options. There's a lot of red-white cards. I'm not liking the options, though. And I don't think I would play a second Blacksmith's Talent, like I said. So I'm just going to hedge my bets and take the Daggerfang duo here. And we get rewarded because there are a couple of red-white cards, but there are a lot of green-black cards here, too. Baker's Bane duo is a great card for this deck, too. And Daggerfang duo is fine as well, but Cash Grab is what I'm looking for here. We'll take that, and what else can we get? What is this one? Two mana, return a permanent card from your graveyard to your hand, and if you give a card, you get two. That works pretty well with double cash grab. We want to make sure we get our lizard count high enough. The red-white life is not great here. Not a lot of great red-white cards, so we'll take the peerless recycling. Huskaburster Swarm is going to be perfect for this as well, with all the self-mill that we've already got. So we can go ahead and take this here. And honestly, a Bark Form Harvester in this deck might not be horrible, depending on how much we're going to be self-milling ourselves. But I'm not going to take it over a premium card like the Husk Burster Swarm. Mouse Trapper, decent for the red-white deck, but there's Dire Sight, Surveil 2, Draw 2, Lose 2. Works pretty well in this kind of deck anyway, fills your yard. So we'll take the Dire Sight. Wield the Carrot Cake. There is a Starscape Cleric, which I don't think is going to work very well in this deck. I'll take the Carrot Cake. I'm not going to play this in black-green. And yeah, this could be fine in red-white if that's where we somehow end up. I'll take the War Squeak here over the Recruiter, I think. Today is not a day for a, a blue draft. I guess I'll take the Scales of Shale. 
Um, yeah, so we kind of have two-ish decks going on, with Green Black being the one I think I want to try to go for more. We'll see what we end up with here. What is this card? 3 mana, 3-3 three, three Vigilance. Whenever it or another creature you control is enter, uh, you bounce, return up to one target creature you control with lesser mana value to its owner's hand, and frogs are mana dorks. There's a long stalk brawl, there's a bat warrior with death touch, there's a bat cleric with losing life. This deck or this this pack is not very good. Might just take the long stalk brawl as a little bit of removal here. I don't think this is worth splashing. It's also hard to splash in these green black decks where you're milling yourself a lot, because if you mill like one of your only two or three sources for the splash color then you could put yourself in a weird situation. So I guess I'm going to just take the long stock brawl and not be very happy with it. So here's a black card that is a rat build around. Wear down, destroy target artifact or enchantment. You can gift a card. Agate Assassin, another long stock brawl. There's a couple of scribes for res red, white. I do like Azure Beast Binder, but... I don't think that's what we're doing here. I guess I'll take another Brawl. I mean, I could take like a Scribe or something. I just think this is not super great. Okay, another Cash Grab. Wow, lots of lots of red cards here. Maybe we wheel the Bark Forum Harvester. I think Red White is, is the spot to be right now. I just, this card is like such a good reason to be doing this thing. We only have one squirrel. Maybe, maybe we shouldn't be. Gosh, this is kind of the moment I have to basically decide. I think I'm just going to take the mentor here and Eat my vegetables as Black Green is looking to be cut away from me. Another talent, a combat trick, a Jolly Gerbils. I guess I take the combat trick here. I just don't, I think I, I've kind of botched this draft a little bit. Yeah, the Black Green, the Black Green cards have not been flowing. We haven't seen like any squirrels. Three mana, if a lizard, mouse, otter, or raccoon you control would deal damage to a permanent or player deals that damage plus one. So three mana, three, three with a little bit of upside. There's another carrot cake here. I guess I'll take this one. Banishing light. And now we get a nocturnal hunger quite late. One, so we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine cards for green, black, and one, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight cards for red, white. Gosh. Now it's nine and nine. <laughs> yeah, I guess I take the sharpshooter over early winter or mudflat village or something. Now, early winter's better in black green if we have to go that direction. I just, I need to decide, like, now. <laughs> Guess I'll take the charger. Bravekin duo, I think, is fine in red-white. Okay, we did wheel a couple of the scribes. I can take that. Whisker, Quill, Scribe here, and another one, I guess. Alright, so it looks like red-white is the place to be. As much as I wanted the whole green-black thing to be a thing. Especially as we now get a Thornbolt Forager, but I just don't think I can go back. As bad as the red-white options are here, I think I can't take a Thornbolt Forager. I mean, I've only got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 playables. And if I get 13 out of this pack, I mean, I could play these two things. No, I just got to be red-white at this point. So, 
and take the world's most disappointing pack three pick one Warren Elder? Yeah, pretty much. And move black green to the side as it just was not open for us today. I had a couple of decent little good commons and uncommons early, but did not quite have what it takes to get there. What else can we take here? A nettle guard, a carrot cake, patchwork banner currently with five mice, not great. Daggerfang duo, but like I said, that, that dream has passed. I think I take the two drop here. The last one of these wield, maybe I can wield this one too, but we'll take nettle guard. And looks like we are red-white. Hopefully not playing that, but we're going to have to probably play at least a few of these cards that I probably don't really want to play. <laughs> There's another cash grab, a Baker's Bane duo. I just, it's a deck I want to play, even though I don't think it's, I know it's not right at this point to go into it. So Thistledown players, Carrot Cake, or Banishing Light number two. How many creatures do we have? Ten Yes, I'll take the Banishing Light and hope to wheel Carrot Cake, Players, or Sharpshooter. Alright, take out the trash. Not bad here. Why are all the Squirrel cards coming around in Pack 3 right after I decided not to? <laughs> uh, Crumb and Get It, Provisioner, and War Squeak. I think I'll take the Provisioner as a top end of the curve, put a counter on something, trigger Valiant. I do like Crumb and Get It, but we already have War Screep, Screech, Squeak, and a Crumb and Get It, as well as a Bravekin Duo to trigger Valiant. So let's go ahead and just take the creature here. Banishing Light number three. Gosh, cash grab again. Why couldn't Green Black have been open from that way? And then I could have done it in pack two. Raccoon Rallier, that's fine. Over Star Charter, Sonar Strike. Yeah, we'll take the Rallier here. Can I get a couple more? I need at least three more cards out of the last six-ish picks. Okay, we did get a Carrot Cake. I could also take Three Tree Mascot, but let's take this here. I don't think... I want Lupin Flower Village, so I guess I'll just take, the. I could take Cindering Cutthroat as well, actually. You know what, I think I might just do that. Two and a red for a three-two. All right, take the Provisioner here. Did wheel the Sharpshooter. Can I get anything else? Got a last, second to last pick duo there. And the last pick, anything? No. All right, well, this is the deck if I want to play 16 lands. And I'm not even going to make a cut because, or cut in the video, because this, this just is the deck. If I want to go 16 lands, this is the whole deck. And if I want to go 17 lands, I have to cut one card, which I don't think I do, because we have a two fives, two fours, Bunch of threes. The only mana sink is the cutthroat. Guess the charger could almost be like a four drop sometimes. Carrot cake is kind of a mana sink. I just don't think I need 17 lands here. So this is where it ended up in a really, really awkward draft that I still, I think we ended up in the correct color pair I just don't think it was very strong and just got cut out of black green in that second pack so this is how I'm going to run it not thrilled with where we ended up but you know sometimes these aggressive decks can get ahead of some bad starts from your opponent so we're going to give it a shot but before we get into the first game here if you go ahead and check out the sponsor of today's video and the channel in general W Energy which is a zero sugar zero calorie powder based energy drink then you can head to w.gg 
and use code DAILYDRAFT for 10% off your entire purchase. They've got merch, they've got all sorts of flavor, 15 plus flavors, including a couple of canned flavors. You are in the market for a new jitter-free and crash-free energy drink. Dubby is the place to go. And again, you in turn support the channel by doing so. So thanks for your consideration on that, and I'll see you in game number one. All right, here we are in game one going first with a bunch of twos and a couple of one combat tricks. So we'll keep it and probably lead on the rallier first is my plan here. And next turn we can play Elder and, and War Squeak, but I don't think I really need to do that. Do I want to discard one of these cards to draw something? The Warren Elder is honestly not that great right now. So I'm just going to go ahead and rummage that away. Another land isn't horrible, so... They've got nothing. Okay. Yeah, I think I'll keep the land and not rummage it get the creature scry a brave kin duo no i could probably do better and then just sacrifice the carrot cake here i think banishing light can remove whatever they play war squeak can attack past their next play so as long as they don't have two decently sized creatures okay that should be fine You don't need another one. <clears throat> Guess I'll use the Banishing Light. And then... I'll just keep the land in hand in the event that I really need to um, rummage it away. Okay, that should be fine. I think we now do win. Haven't done the math yet, but I think it's pretty close. So now we just go War Squeak, target here. Discard the land. That can't block. And then attack all. Give that there. And that, I believe, should do it. Down to negative one. Starting on the draw this time, guys. This hand isn't great. We need both mountains and more creatures we have removal not a combat trick i guess i keep it it doesn't i just i don't think this is going to be the greatest of starting hands but i don't think the deck is the greatest of starting decks so i'm not sure we have much better available to us so we are obviously um Forecasting that we have a trick there, but I, I mean just sit back and try to use it on defense or something Okay, we did get that um Do I want to potentially use this on blocks here? I don't think I want to use a Banishing Light on one of these things. I could attack through with War Squeak right now, but like... That doesn't push much damage at all and just makes this thing a 2-2. Two -two. I mean, 
mean, I have three of these. I guess I'll use this now. It potentially lets me attack with this next turn and play this and get a counter on it. We'll see. No, we won't be able to do that. So do I just play it as a 3-3 Menace Reach here? Probably, I mean, I assume it's probably gonna die. <laughs> so I'll just play it out anyway, even if I played it as a 4-4, it was probably gonna die. And to play it as a 4-4, I, I would have had to wait a turn. It died anyway. Would have died even if it was a 4-4. Four, four. Okay, got, got no action whatsoever here. That is a lot of creatures that I can't get by. The rabbit's deck is, I think, just too good. Don't need my my eighth land. I can tell you that much. That is a great card. Yeah, that card is the card is busted. Sure. Take five. I think this game is about over. We have drawn two singular creatures, and one of them is a 1-1. One, one. I don't have a raccoon, so I can't draw and discard they have something to give like plus a ton plus a ton next turn I think we are quite dead either way here. Not really much we can do to get back out of this one. They're at 21. Carrot cake. Let's gain some life. Don't need that. That doesn't do much either. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're, we're not winning this game. So we will go on to game three. Well, this time we actually do have a way to kind of loot through some of the lands and bad cards that we're drawing. Or rummage through, I guess, is the right way to say that. So hopefully these two things survive so I can sculpt my hand here. Nope, that's not it. Let's do this, and then... I guess we'll do... This here. That is a zero mana way to trigger Valiant. Fireglass Mentor. So, at the beginning of your second main... An opponent lost life, exile the top two, you can choose and play one. So let's do this. I guess I'll 
give it haste. And then... Attack with both? So they get to start potentially drawing extra cards here. They did hit a land. I'm sure they'll cast that. Or play that. I mean, I, I have to be aggressive here. I can't really sit back and hope to block these decks. My cards are just not very good. Okay, let's start by getting rid of a mountain? Question mark? Might not have been right. War squeak. Uh, yeah, that's probably okay, actually. That could actually help us push more damage here. Okay, four mana over there. I can block this thing now. That's a 2-2. Two, two. And something is dying. <laughs> Hopefully it's sorcery speed. Yes. Thank goodness they didn't wait until I used the war squeak. Let's go ahead, put this here, and then this can't block. We'll attack all, and probably just let it trade with the Mentor if they choose to block. Yeah, I think I just need to do that, and then play the War and Elder post-combat here. Now if I draw a land, I can Banishing Light, a blocker, and use Crumb and Get It to push some damage here. Alright, so they're trying to trigger if a creature left. Yeah, that's what I kind of thought they were going to play as a 4-4. Now Banishing the Light should be able to deal with that quite well. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7... Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and put him to 1. That is 3 lethal threats now. And they have to play a removal and a creature or two creatures or two removal spells for this to not work out. Or just sacrifice food that I forgot they had. Yeah, that was a dumb play. I didn't even... I don't know why I did not see that they had a food over there. And they do have the removal as well. Okay. I'm going to do this on my upkeep so I can get a scry before I draw here. We'll go ahead and draw Mentor, go to main, and then attack here, put them back to one. This thing has haste next turn. No, no, they're just going to chump, preserve their life. Okay, that's a 3-4 and nothing else, you say. Okay, let's do this. And this. 
and then they'd have to chump and go to one and I guess that's too much for them. All right, so again, our deck is not very good, but we're getting lucky not going up against the most synergistics of decks so far on the other side, except for that stupid rabbit's deck. Here we are going first with, you know, honestly, one of the better hands I think we could have with this deck. Carrot Cake into Mentor into Pathmaker, hopefully hitting something we can draw. Or, yeah, hitting something we can play. Vanishing Light. Yeah, that's probably a decent thing to have access to. Could mean I miss a land drop two turns from now, but we still have another Mentor to play if that's the case. Whose red-white deck will reign supreme here? Oh, they still have plus two, plus two. The Valiant trick. So I might use the Banishing Light on that thing at some point here. Because the plus two plus two trick is not going to care about the Heartfire Hero and when it dies, deals damage equal to its power. Crumb and Get It is what I believe they have as well. Swordmaster, and nothing else. Okay. Well, in that case, do I trade off Seed Glaive Mentors and just play the Pathmaker here? They might not block it. I mean, if they do, I'll just trade it for the Heartfire Hero. That's probably fine. My guess is they don't block it. Yeah. Yeah. So that worked out fine for us, so we'll just play this and see what we hit. Okay, hit a land. Got our fifth land coming next turn. We can do one of these two plus a carrot cake. They've got a scary board. Tons of Valiant stuff, knowing that they also have plus two, plus two in hand. Ooh, and pumping their mice, yeah. So, would I like to get rid of that instead now? I think I might. Yeah, because that means they also can't have their combat trick up now, unless they want to use it pre-combat. Yeah, looks like they will. That's fine. So just to prevent some damage here. So I just won't attack. Here comes Crumb and get it. Sure. Sure. Play this. Actually, yeah, that's probably just fine. That's a flyer. And no attacks. Back to a 3-3. Three, three. Okay, I will go ahead and block now. Nope, they chose not to. All right. Okay, so we got the Heartfire Hero off the board. We have a 3-4 Flyer. We are at 13. If we could draw a way to give Valiant to the Mentor, that might not be horrible. We do have Carrot Cake activations to gain some life as well. Carrot Cake is just performing like in every deck I put it in. It is much better than I thought it would be. It seems too slow, but like it's 4 mana for 2 one ones, gain 3 life, scry 2. Like, that's just good. Do they have another trick here? I'll trade another crumb and get it for my two one ones. I think that's fine. Nope, they didn't even have that. Sure. Alright, 
mentor and they don't have anything else nice so we get to put them to two here again gonna do the whole carrot cake on upkeep thing if they don't concede if they do then we win but if they don't then we can carrot cake on upkeep to get a scry on upkeep to get a scry hop to it that's three one ones that keeps them alive and another sword master. Okay. Uh, well, yeah. That's probably okay. Sure. So let's enchant this guy make that unable to block so we're going to trade two of these for this and chump the other one or would I rather just make them chump with one of them no let's just let's just trade I'll let them trade and then chump Our life total has been buffered by the double carrot cake here. If the mentor dies, that's not great. That's a great card. So this one, whenever it becomes the target of spell, so Valiant, look at the top five, put a creature card through among them into onto the battlefield if it's your turn or in, onto your into your hand. If it's not. Raccoon Rallier. I, did, I mean, I hope it's not a land that I draw, but I don't think that's good enough. He says that's it's a land that he draws. So they chump this here. They eat this here. And they go to one. Is that worth throwing away a 1-1? One, one? Yes. Okay, let's hope they don't have Valiant. Because a Valiant trigger could get them definitely right back. Oh my gosh, it's a Valiant trigger that also gets rid of my only creature. Oh, that was absolutely brutal. Oh, that was brutal, man. And another creature? No. Yeah, now they have free Valiant every turn, so they just get a free creature onto the battlefield every single turn, plus the card they draw. Looks like we are going to lose to a couple of rares here. Darn. Haste, Vigilance, Trample. And another creature? No, not yet. Gosh, we got them to one, but one is not zero. Well, maybe, maybe <laughs> one time, no removal, one time. No removal, no flyer. Okay. That's okay. Alright, as long as that's not a removal spell or a flyer, we win. Okay. Okay. 
Did we somehow pull this one out here? Nothing has a reach, right? All right, well, oh my goodness. <laughs> we didn't deserve that one, I'll tell you that. But uh, that was about the only top deck I think we could have had, so we will take it. All right, here we are on the play again, and we will keep it with two, three. And this one actually lets this thing deal an extra damage. Ooh, do we want this one or this one now? A three, one or a 2-2. Two, two. Next turn we're just playing this and attacking. So... This is probably just going to trade off for whatever they've got. So let's play this. Play the Flame Caller next turn and attack. Okay, looks like they might have the food removal spell. So we'll see if they use it on our scribe here. They do have an instant for a black and a white. My guess is it is Saver going to kill our scribe. No? Interesting. Warren Elder and nothing else. Okay. Let's go ahead and do Nettle Guard. Ooh, this is going to be nice. Equip it, get Valiant, and make your Warren Elder unable to attack. And hit for a bunch of damage. <laughs> is it other creatures, or is it just yours? Yeah. No, so it does it to itself, too. So it attacks as like a 4-3, kind of. Okay, my turn. Uh, let's just uh, let's push the damage. Why not? I'm sure they're going to use a removal spell, but, I mean... Even if they remove this, we still win. They have to remove two things here. Alright, what you got? Downwind Ambusher. Give something minus one, minus one. Sure. That should still be lethal block here. Take the rest. All right. Well, once again, we are just drawing cards in an order that is working out for our mediocre deck here. Sometimes aggro, like I said, won't in deck building. Sometimes aggro just gets over the line. All right. Starting on the draw, but we've got blacksmith's talent and a two drop, which is great because that means we go talent, scribe, and then level up the talent, and then we get an actor or a uh, level. A Valiant trigger on the Scribe for as long as it stays alive. Because you can keep targeting it itself with it. Now, it is our only creature, so we kind of have to hope it doesn't die. But these green-white decks have proven to be a huge problem for other aggro decks. Because they just go so wide and I can't get through. So... next turn. If they leave up all their mana, I'm probably not going to do this, but we'll see. With Offspring, right? What is this? It's a rare. Can't be good. Whenever a creature you control becomes a target of spell or ability that I control, put a counter on a creature you control other than that creature. Yeah, that's good. I don't think they're going to block. If they do, that's not great for me because I don't have any other creatures. This is going to be tough here. Three mana for a 2-1 and a 1-1 that like really hose 
my removal spells, like everything I have in my hand targets them. I don't even know how to play around that. <laughs> like I can banishing light one of them and then take out the trash the other one. Can I race is the issue. Like, I can play Flame Caller and then do War Squeak. I don't know if I can race a Carrot Cake and a Food on the battlefield. So I get to push 9 damage right now at the expense of them getting 2 counters. Yeah, sure. More removal. Good and bad. <laughs> Not to mention they can chump with this 1-1 one -one that they make from the carrot cake. Oh, do they have sonar strike? Oh, that would be so bad for me. No? Okay. They chose not to block with the carrot cake token. Maybe that they think they can race here? Oh, gosh. All right, they get to get an Intrepid Rabbit back. They got two of them. Both of those are really good. And again, they just have so many creatures I can't get through. If I draw a land next turn and they attack everything and kick the rabbit, I could probably win. Okay, let's see. If they attack all and I draw a land, I win. Now they know better. Yeah, darn. Ugh. See, just too many creatures. Like, I've got a lot of good attackers, but all these 1-1s one just... I can't get through it. Plus, they had a really, really busted rare that they played, like, on turn three with both things. So, it's, it's going to be tough to race that. They've got life gain. They've got everything. The rabbit decks are too good. I think, I think it is the boogeyman of the format, unfortunately. I mean, I can't... None of these have vigilance, so I can't really attack. What am I doing? Blocking, blocking, taking one, two, three, four here, so no attacks. I mean, Intrepid Rabbit, like I've been saying in all of my videos here, this card is the best common. It's the best common by a lot. And, you know, you just play these kind of decks, go wide, pump your creatures, and it's usually good enough. I don't think I have a way to give trample in my deck. Gives double strike, but I don't have trample. And trample's what you need. Maybe I should, like, put cards that have trample or give trample higher in my pick order, like that plus one plus oh mouse trick would be pretty good. This one has vigilance. I mean, I guess I can potentially whittle down their board a little bit here.
Okay, I have to take at least one. They're just gaining all the life. They're effectively at like 18 life if they want to be. I mean, these, these decks have it all. There's another flyer, yeah. Draws them an extra card. Gets them an extra counter. Oh, there's a rare. Alright, let's keep it equipped, but get the counter. Do this. So when this or another creature you control with flying dies, you get more stuff to the battlefield here. Gosh, can I give Trample one way? I do have a raccoon, but I'm going to have to use this. Probably now. We're fighting back, but I just don't think we have enough to get through here. Green, white, rabbits. What a deck. What a deck. Alright, go to four, play this thing, and then top deck a land and lose. That is my prediction. No, nope, they'll go wide. <laughs> they will go wide instead. I can't beat this. <laughs> it's impossible. We're officially dead on board here. They just have to take this and then we take two and we only have five blockers against seven attackers. So we were we were dead on board, but they chose to chump, so maybe we'll somehow survive this. Maybe one more turn. So we go to two, we have five blockers against five attackers, so we're technically not dead. We are next turn. Or do they have a trick as well? Yeah, they do. All right. Looks like they got us. Hopefully no more uh, green-white decks. <laughs> Here we are going first. We've got a two drop. We need two shots at a land to be able to play Flame Caller. I guess it's a keep. Could go wrong. One way it could go wrong is our opponent plays a forest followed by an island. That would be bad news for us. Come on. Okay. Not an island. Forest followed by a plains is what I meant to say. So, but if it's plains followed by forest, not near as bad. See? We're fine. Kidding. We have lost. We missed the land drop, and they're playing green-white. So we are toast, unfortunately. Yep, there they go. Going too wide. Can't do anything about it. Well, it looks like... What are we now? Four and three? That was a quick loss here at the end. A bit unfortunate. I still... I stand by the fact that I think that's a key. But, I mean, look at this. This... This is just, I think Bloomborough is going to be decided by just green-white over and over and over again. I mean, everyone knows it's the best deck, and unfortunately, we 
got to play against it a lot. And people are starting to get to the point where they, they realize this as well. So, it does not feel great. We'll fight it out, but I don't think this one's going to go our way. Yep, here comes everything. They have plus two, plus one. Did we just die already? Yeah, there it is. Good game. <laughs> that was fun. And by fun, I mean not at all. Okay, so we go four and three with this red-white deck, losing to green-white at least a couple of times. Uh, and green-white is ruining this format for me here in week week one or two unfortunately hope you guys aren't experiencing the same thing can't beat them join them maybe the half of the rest of the drafts are all going to be green white now that everyone's figured this out it's really annoying but uh it's the life we live in for the next 15 drafts here on the channel so we're gonna have to figure out a way to deal with it thanks for tuning in today and i'll see you next time for your daily draft mm -hmm.